Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Old Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for January the 24th, 2021 is called for the world's belief. Our Bible scriptures today are taken from the gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, verses 14 through 24. And we're still in this quarterly theme of call in the New Testament. And our unit of study is Jesus and calls in his ministry. And we're going into this 17th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. And in this chapter is the real Lord's Prayer. Now, we know that Jesus gave the model prayer that we actually call the Lord's Prayer, and it, it was given in, as a model, and we'll notice that when Jesus prayed, he prays and uses the, the elements of that model prayer in the way that he speaks to his Father. Now, we're not always required to make all of those elements happen when we do pray because sometimes there's just not time to do all of those things and, and all the ceremonial type things that we say before we get into praying. That would have been un unfruitful for Brother Peter when he was walking on the water and took his eyes off of Jesus and began to sink if he would have went into the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of those things before he got into the body of his prayer, he would have drowned first, but he just said, Lord, save me. And the Lord himself takes care of all the other things. The Bible teaches us, the apostle Paul says that the spirit prays with groanings that we can't even utter, even though some of us try to utter, but the spirit does pray it with groanings and he knows exactly what we need before we actually ask for it. But he does inhabit the praises of his people. He wants to hear from us. He wants us to talk to him. The Lord wants us to communicate with him. We get into this chapter in this real Lord's prayer. The, the other gospel writers, they did talk about the, the time when Jesus walked over the Kedron uh, Bridge and, and River to go out into the, the Garden of Gethsemane uh, and to pray it, that night before he, he was to, uh, to be killed. And even that night, he was going to be taken out of the garden and judged. It told it, all of them tell about it, but all, usually they would speak of the synoptic gospels. They speak of the 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 grossness of it, the the hardship of it, the 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 brutal way that he would be treated, and the even the brutal praying that he did while he was there, the the drops of sweat that was like drops of blood, and they talked about about that. But here we see, and it doesn't look as if it was it was all that bad, but it was gruesome. It was a, a, a hard prayer because the Lord knew that he was he was fixing to, to leave this world. He knew that the human body that he he had was about to be laid down in a grave, that it was going to be t taken away. And, and he knew that it was going to be brutality even in his death. But he needed to do some things in this prayer because this section of scripture, as it starts to it actually, the, the, the things, the events that are happening started in the 11th chapter of this gospel according to St. John. Everything began in a downward spiral toward the cross when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. They decided there, the, the high priest, Caiaphas, as a matter of fact, who was the actual the, the high priest that and his father-in-law was really the high priest, but he was he was the one that was recognized by Rome as, as the high priest. He was the one that prophesied that one should die. After he raised Lazarus from the dead, they decided, Caiaphas decided that one should die rather than all perish. He didn't realize that he was prophesying, the scripture tells us there in the 11th chapter. But then all of those things began to happen 
as they were trying to figure out a way that, that Jesus would die. And we get up to where he gives all of these teachings to his disciples, letting them know that he was going away, letting them know in the 14th chapter that he is the way, the, the truth, and the life. No one comes to, to the Father but by him. The 15th chapter tells about the Holy Spirit, the comforter that, that is coming, along with the 16th chapter. He is the one that's going to lead you and guide you in all ways of truth. And then we get to this 17th chapter, where he's in the garden and he is praying. He's praying on behalf of himself. He has to pray because there is going to be some things that are going to happen that even in this human body, he hurt the same way we do when he is hit, when he is slapped, when he was spit on by the, by the soldiers, when, when the crown of thorns would, would be put on his head and pressed into his skull, when his back would be beaten while he was there on the whipping post, he would feel all those things in reality, but he would stay right there, not because he had to, because he let the pilot know that I could call a legion of angels if my kingdom was of this world and they would come and defend me. And, and if he called a legion of angels, if one angel could, could during the days of Hezekiah, wipe out 187,000 soldiers in one night, then what could a legion of angels do with the human population in, in, in one night or in just a little while? So Jesus didn't call. He stayed there on our behalf because he loved us. And that will come in big play into this, this prayer right here because of the oneness that he has with the people that trust and believe in him. He stayed there because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. So we don't deal with the, with really the first parts of this chapter, but he, he did tell us that, that all of his work, just as he would say as he's hanging there on the cross, he, he told his father that everything that you have given me to do, the assignment that you have given me has been finished. He didn't deviate from the project that was at hand. The fourth verse tells us that in this 17th uh, chapter right here. But then we get down here to where we, we, we have our Sunday school lesson tells us called for the world's belief. He said in the 14th verse, I have given them thy word, them being the disciples, the apostles, the, the, those that would be apostles, and the world hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He tells, he, he, he's speaking to his father, and there he, he's talking to, to God just as he, he, you and I would talk. To, to our parents, and, and he's talking to him, giving him, him everything about it. And, and when we get to a point to where we talk to the Father like he's actually there, that's when our faith is real. When, that's when we trust him to do something about it. He talked to his Father. It wasn't a, a ceremonial type prayer where we felt like we had to butter God up to get him to do what he what he he wants to do for us the the blessings that he wants to d give us and deliver to us and 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 rain down upon us we feel like we have to butter him up but he doesn't need us to butter him up he is god and it, and he knows if we're trying to trick him too he said i've given them thy word the word here is lagos in in the, in the greek and which means it's the scripture i've given them the the, the this is the word of god that a living scripture was jesus because john would say that he is the word the, and the word was with god and the word was god he is the word he is the scripture I've given them thy word, your word, Lord. This is this is it, your scripture. And the world hated them. The world, why would the world hate them? Because Jesus had given them the word. They had the word of God living in them. Sometimes people hate you and they can't even put their finger on the reason that they hate you. They see and they say it's something about you. But some will look at you and recognize it's something about you, and they're not even against you nor hate you, but there's something they, they, they don't have a relationship with yet, and that's sometimes your opportunity to share with you, with them, 
what, who that relationship is with. They, they'll, they'll understand. The world hated them because the word was in them. He had given them the word. It, look at this. Because they are not of the world. This is, this is one of the reasons they hate, because the word is in them. They, I've given them the word, and that word reveals that they are not of the world. They, they, the word has made a change in their life, and even as I'm not of the world, just as I'm not of the world, the one that is the word, that gave them the word, the Lagos, he says here that because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world, they hated them. The world hated them. The world wants you to do world. They want you to be the world. They don't, they don't understand. But Jesus would let them know that it's, it's, it's even bigger than that. So what do you do? Do you take them out of the world? Or do we read verse 15 and say, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. That thou shouldest keep them from evil. He says, not that that shot, you shouldn't take them out of the world. He's not, I'm not, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, Father, because they, they need to be a part it, it, of this world in, in a certain type way. Now, they could go into isolation and they could be, they could be just like the priest there in, in the gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 25 through 37, when that person stood up and wanted to look big in front of Jesus and Jesus gave, gave that parable of the good Samaritan and how the priest passed by on the other side of the road, isolated from anything that might cause him to be ceremonially unclean. The Levite came over and looked, but didn't touch because he would be declared ceremoniously un unclean too. But the isolation is definitely not the way either. So you, so you can't just isolate. He said, I, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil, to keep them from evil, not, not that you should take them out because the, the way of the priest was to help the person out, but it was revealed that the person that they didn't think would help did, and that was the, the Samaritan that, that, that gave even to a person that would be against him if he probably saw him in an upright position. So now we, we look at this. So the Lord is saying that I, I'm not praying that you should take them out of the world because they can't be fruitful if they isolate themselves from the world. They need to be out there among people. People have to see. They have to, it, matter of fact, Jesus said it there in, in, the, in the Sermon on the Mount. He said in the, fifth, the 16th verse of the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, he said, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. They, they see your good work and they glorify God if they know that there is God in you. They, they'll glorify God. So the, your, your light have to shine in the world, but it can't shine if you're isolated. If you become like the priest and the Samaritan, I, I mean the, the priest and the Levite, and not like the Samaritan, then your light is not shining. The, sh the light needs to shine so that men will see your good work and give God the glory. He said, I pray now that, that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil. Even right here in the midst of the world, things going on, I pr I'm praying for your protection is what he's saying, that, that you will be around them and keep them from the things that would cause evilness all around them. And verse 16 says, they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. He said, they, they are not of the world. Yes, they're, they're in the world and I need them to stay in the world. I need them to, to be out there with their light shining. I need them to share Jesus Christ. I need them to share words about the, the words that I'm saying, the word that I've given them, that is the word about you. And I realize that they're going to be hated, Father, but they are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. But they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. He reiterates that again, as, as he did in, in, in the 14th verse, in verse 16. And then he says in the 17th verse, Sanctify them through thy truth, colon, thy word is truth. So he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Now, in this 17th chapter, We've already come through already the 14th chapter, where the sixth verse, let, let them know that I am the way, 
the disciples that were around, let them know that I am the way, the truth. Jesus is the truth. Now, but we see here that there's something else that is truth. And it all goes back to the person of Jesus. And, and it would be in the, in the, in the, the, the first volume. The first volume is the word. His God's word it came first and it, it, it was true. Well, we found out that Jesus is the word of God. The word was with God and the word was God. So that word is true. And he said, but he also said, I am true. The son is true there in the 14th chapter, the sixth verse. But in 1 John, the fifth chapter, the sixth verse, he said that his spirit also is truth. Well, the spirit is the second, there's a third person of the Trinity. So we look here and we see that he says, sanctify them through thy truth, through your word. The word is truth. Through your word, your word would be the cleansing agent or the word would be the part, the thing that sets them apart, that sets them, gets them to the point where they're, they're sanctified. And the sanctification there is for service, set aside for service, set aside as holy for service. We have to put them all together. Sanctify there means to, to set them and they are holy. Just as the, the example that we, we always give is it's when the children of Israel would in the days of wilderness wander and God set up the temple, the, the, the tabernacle for them to, to worship at. And when they get ready to move to the next place, they, they would probably take down the tent and they would wrap up that, that old table that, that the showbread would sit on and, and the candlesticks, they'd wrap them up and, and put everything to where, but so they, they didn't stop along the way and say, let's have a picnic and take out the candlestick holder and, and set it up in the middle of the, of the table that's, that's for the showbread because that was set aside for a particular thing and it was holy. It was hollowed out for the service of God. They didn't take the cup and, and, and put wine in it so that everybody could pass it around and drink it down and get drunk because that wasn't what that was for. It was for the service of, of the Lord. This wasn't to drink the beer out of. This was for the service of, of the Lord. It was sanctified. It was set aside, set apart for the service of God. So the, Jesus is saying here, set them aside for your service and, and do this by your word, your word, even your word, that's truth. That will set them, that set them aside, sanctify them. How? Through thy truth and your word is true. And sanctify means pure and holy also. Verse 18 says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. Jesus is our best example. Now, he sent them into the world. They found out that, that, that out there in the world that there are raving wolves and they want to tear you apart. We just said in the 14th verse that they hated them even just because they had the word in them and because they were not of the world. They didn't do the same things that we do even though they walked on the same ground that we walked. They didn't do it. So Jesus was their best example. Thou hast sent me into the world even so I send them. Well, to keep the example going, verse 19 says, for their sake, I sanctify myself that they might also be sanctified through the truth. Now, Jesus is not talking about here the sanctified to mean, mean to be uh, made holy because he is holy because he was always God. Even when he was the babe of Bethlehem, he was always God. But this was is a, a part where they would see him give himself sacrificially completely. They would be able to see this as an example. And the, the, the hymnologist says, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. As be, and then I surrender all, all of it, everything. Jesus is saying to give ourselves completely to the Lord. I know that that seems like it's, it, it, the song make it sound like it's easy to do, but it's a little harder to do than that. You have to commit yourselves to him through his word. His word is what gets you to the point where you can surrender 
all to him. Uh, give yourself entirely. And that's what Jesus was going to do sacrificially there on the cross to save men from their sins if they had just simply believed the fact that he did that for them, was put in a borrowed tomb and raised up, got up from the grave on the third day, surrendered all. He, he was That's what he's talking about there when he says sanctify. He, it, it is him giving himself totally and completely to his father so that others can learn to be to, to give themselves totally and completely, not in the same way. They won't be sacrificed the same way, but for the service because they are sanctified, set apart for service. Verse, verse 20 is our main thought verse. He said, neither pray I for these alone. This is a special part for us, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Jesus said this. He said, neither I pray. Now, this was over 2,000 years ago when Jesus knelt down here in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and he had you and me on his mind. He said, I'm not just praying for these disciples and apostles, these guys that are over there asleep now when I told them to watch as well as pray. He said, I'm not just praying for them and, and, and asking you to keep them from the evil one and, and, and help them to stay and let them walk upon the world and so the world can see their good works and glorify by you. But I'm also asking that you will, that, that, that you, that they are mine also. Neither I pray for them alone. I'm praying that you will keep them also, just as you keep these other guys. I'm praying for them also. But for them also which shall believe on me through their words, the words that they're going to share. I'm going to come back to you, Father, and they're going to be the ones that are down here pounding the pavement as they, they give the word of God out and, and they continue the ministry saying the words that I've given them. And, and yes, they're going to be hated because they are not of the world. But but you said he, he, he was able to tell them that if he's lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. So he says here, but for them also which shall believe on me. Those that, that believe on him, he was praying for them that will believe also right there when he prayed there in the Garden of Gethsemane. He, those that believe in me and hear through their words, the words that they would continue to share. And verse 21 says that they all may be one. Now, this happened. This, be, this became the reality. After Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, something was birthed that day on the day of Pentecost. And everyone that came to Jesus after that were put into the church. Jesus had already told the, the Peter that, that that pebble that, that, that was Simon at first that was shifting sand. But when he made that statement there that, that, that I believe that, that, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God in the 16th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. That rock solid statement that you said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So everyone that trusts Jesus Christ as their savior, they're put into the body of Christ. They're put into the church. It doesn't matter what denomination. If they trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then they're saved already. I know sometimes we get so tied up in the denomination, we don't want that other person to praise like that. But if they trust Jesus Christ, died for their sin, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and got up on the third day, Paul said that's the gospel message, then they shall be saved. And it's what he said in the 10th chapter of Romans. And, but so now we, we see that, that they all may be one as thou father are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, that they all may be one. That's the church. 
that, that everyone, the body of baptized believers in Jesus Christ, not, not necessarily water baptism the way that we, we think, because that is one of the, the rituals of the church. We, we, we should be. But it would it would have been quite strange if Jesus would have stopped tried to stop dying there on the cross and told the other fellow, wait a minute, we need to crawl down off the cross so that I can put you down in some water. But I'm I, he spoke to him and he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. So he was baptizing him in the spirit at that time. He had made him a promise, and that's what he does for all of us. The the baptism that we do is an open profession of our faith. So that. That's what was was what's happening here, that they all may be one, that they all may be a body in the church, even as Jesus and his father are one, I and thee, and they also may, may be one in us. They'll be a part of this family. And then that colon there in the middle of this says that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. When when they they come together and they begin to worship, and people begin to see you in the way that they worship, in the things that they do, in the steps that they make, that and that world may believe that thou, that you, Father, have sent me, is what Jesus is saying here. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. He said, the glory that, that you, you've given me, this, this glory right here, God has, de has declared that he won't share his glory with anyone. So what glory is he talking about here that, that he's able to give to them? The, the, this is a certain type of glory because God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And But he He, he is the the radiant, beaming light. He is a, 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 a just an awesome, uh, per powerful person. But look at this. This is something that, that is for us. When the glory of God filled the temple there when, when, when Solomon prayed, the, the priest wasn't able to go in and even perform their priestly duties that day because the kabod, that is the glory, this certain type of glory, not, the, not God's personal glory, but the glory that God will give and let man be a part of. He, he said, this is the kabod, this is the substance, this is the reality of his holiness, the radiance of, of God himself. We were able to see it, but man will have their own one day when they are with the Lord, when, when we are with the Lord. And, and so we, we, we see that the, the apostle Paul said this, Romans 8, 30, moreover whom he did predestinate, he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, whom also he glorified. The, everyone that trusts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, one day they will have the kabod all around them. They'll have the substance. It'll be the weightier part of holy living. And in verse 23, I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one. As the Lord, we, we get closer to the Lord. How did this come? Verse 17 set apart for the service of, Lord, of the Lord through thy truth. Your word is truth. That's the way we get closer to him. That's the way he, he's in us and we are in him. I and them and thou and me that they may be made perfect in one and the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Remember, Jesus' whole purpose and plan, he told the, the disciples there in the 13th chapter, verse 35, he said, this is the way that the world will know that you are mine, by the love that you have for one another. Just the way that my father loves me and I love you, you love one another, you love the, the brotherhood and the sisterhood, you love the, the, each other the same way, and they'll know that you are a part of me. They'll know that you are, are my disciple. He said, the father, father, I will, this, this is Jesus talking to his father. I will that they whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. He's always loved him because he's always been his son. He said, father, 
that I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. He told his disciples there in the 14th chapter that where I am there, you will be also. He said, I'm going away to prepare a dwelling place for you that with, that you can come to me and where I am, you may be, may be also that they may behold my glory, which thou has given me for thou lovest me. Jesus said, even before the foundation of the world, call for the world's belief. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that you'll get us to the point where we do understand the teachings that Jesus have in the prayers that are written in the scripture for us and the word that he has given us so that we can share Jesus with others. Yes, some of the world will hate us because we're not of the world, but Lord, it will be changing to their life as it gets real to them as circumstances come in their life. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.